All right, so this time you've really outdone yourself with this collection of news snippets, social media posts. You've even got some deep tech analysis in there. Someone's been busy. Seems like you're keeping up with current events, but with like a healthy dose of, is this really happening right now? Uh, I mean, who can blame anyone these days? Seriously. Anyway, let's dive into it, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, so Elon Musk and his robots, where do we even start with that? Yeah, his whole thing with advanced robotics is like something out of science fiction. It's that new humanoid robot of his, right? <laughs> <laughs> that design, it just screams uncanny valley. Like, have you ever seen those old Jerry Anderson shows from the 70s? I can't say that I have. They had these robots that were too sleek, emotionless, and this new robot, it's giving me those vibes, intriguing, but kind of creepy at the same time. Interesting you say that because that whole aesthetic actually ties into this bigger conversation about technocracy. Technocracy? Yeah, the idea that society should be run by technical elites. And get this, Musk's family history actually ties into all of this. No way, really. Yeah, his grandfather, he was a chiropractor, but he was super into the technocracy movement back in Canada in the 20s and 30s. Even caused a bit of a stir with his beliefs. Wow, talk about history repeating itself. So we yeah. have Musk, the descendant of a technocracy advocate, now pushing all of this cutting-edge technology, Neuralink, SpaceX, Tesla, all incredible in their own right. But But it all kind of feeds into this idea of technology shaping humanity's future, which, you know, could be amazing, but it also makes you wonder. Right. Like, are we heading towards a utopia or a dystopia? I mean, look at what happened with his Twitter takeover. Yeah. Love it or hate it, it definitely shows the power these tech leaders have. And how quickly things can change. Like, one minute you're having a debate online, the next it's gone, vanished. Makes you wonder, who really gets to control what we see and hear online these days? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? It's like, the Internet is our new public square, but who's really in charge? Algorithms. Billionaires. And it's not just about Twitter, right? You sent over that image, the one everyone was talking about, the hurricane scene from space. Ah, uh, right. People were freaking out, but you seemed, well, let's just say you weren't so quick to jump on the bandwagon. Well, it's healthy to be a little skeptical, don't you think? I mean, just because something's online and looks dramatic doesn't make it the whole truth. Totally. And this is a perfect example of how images can be, well, misleading. I mean, yeah, the photo was taken from the ISS, but... But the way it's presented, it kind of warps the actual size of the hurricane. It's all about perspective, right? It's like that scene, the one from Father Ted with the cows. I think I know what you're talking about. Those cows are small, mm. but those ones are far away. Exactly. That's it. The ISS, it's orbiting pretty low, right? And, and then you add in those fish eye lenses they use, everything at the edges gets all bent out of shape. So dramatic, but not necessarily accurate. And people, they love to jump to conclusions, especially when it comes to stuff like this. Oh, tell me about it. Remember all those posts? The ones blaming the increase in Aurora sightings on, get this, barium drops from airplanes. Who even comes up with this stuff? Right. Amazing what people believe these days. The truth is, Aurora's, they are linked to the sun, but not like that. Okay, so break it down for us. How do solar storms actually cause auroras? Okay, so picture this. The sun. It throws these massive tantrums, right? Huge bursts of energy. We're talking coronal mass ejections or CMEs. Right. Now, when these CMEs hit us, they mess with Earth's magnetic field, make it all shaky. And that's what causes? The auroras. It's like a cosmic light show. These charged particles from the sun, they hit our atmosphere, and boom, those amazing colors. So more solar storms equal more dazzling light shows. Not a bad trade-off, really. Well, not so fast. There's another thing. See, the auroras, they're becoming more common because Earth's magnetic field, it's actually getting weaker. Weaker. Is that like a bad thing? Well, it means more of those charged particles can sneak past our defenses. Could have some long-term effects. But hey, at least the light show is pretty spectacular. There's always a catch, right? But that's what I love about these deep dives. We get the real story, the stuff behind the headlines. Speaking of which, that story about the guy who rode out the hurricane on his sailboat. You had some thoughts on that one. Well, the whole thing, it just felt a little off, uh, you know, like he disappears as the hurricane makes landfall, which, OK, understandable. But then he pops back up totally fine uh, and with perfect hair. Oh, yeah. I remember thinking that. Now, I'm no sailor, but hurricane winds and perfect hair don't exactly go together. Exactly. It makes you wonder, are we so desperate for heroes that we'll just ignore the details that don't quite add up? Interesting. Like, are we drawn to these stories because we need hope? need to believe someone can weather the storm. Maybe. Or maybe it's something else, you know? Like, in this age of influencers and viral fame, 
the lines between reality and a good story can get blurry. Very true. Speaking of blurry lines, let's move on, shall we? We've got some stories. They're a little out there, to say the least. Okay, so we've been talking about, like, blurry lines and weird realities, but some of these stories you send over, they're really something else. It never ceases to amaze me, the situations people find themselves in. No kidding. This one, for example, about the couple celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary. Okay, congrats, right, long time. Ooh, but There's a certain history there. That's putting it mildly. Years of, shall we say, interesting rumors about their relationship, and yet, there they are, happy couple. The picture of domestic bliss. Makes you wonder what goes on behind closed doors, or maybe, you know, we're all reading too much into it. Maybe. Anyway, then there's this one. Woman claims a falling cauliflower ruined her life. How is that even possible? I'll admit the logistics of that one escaped me. Right. Like, was it a grocery store pile up? Giant cauliflower attack from above? One can only imagine. It's hilarious, but also kind of sad. Like, is this what it's come to? Perhaps a touch dramatic. But it does make you wonder, you know, is it attention seeking? Mm -hmm. Looking for a payout? Who knows these days? It's a strange world we live in. Speaking of strange, we have to talk about this last story. It's bizarre and kind of sweet all at the same time. Guy breaks into a house, right? But instead of stealing stuff, he cleans the place. Even leaves a nice note. The cleaning burglar, as they're calling him. <laughs> Baffling, isn't it? Totally. Some people are saying, like, maybe he felt guilty or thought he was doing a good deed. A good deed with a side of breaking and entering. Right. Who knows what goes on in people's heads? Maybe he just really likes to clean and saw an opportunity. That's like, a thought. Whatever the reason, it's kind of heartwarming, isn't it? Like, even with all the craziness in the world, there's still some good out there. A little bit of hope. Mm -hmm. in most unexpected places. Exactly. Well, <laughs> this deep dive has been quite the ride. We've gone from rogue cauliflower to cleaning burglars to the future of humanity. It seems the world just gets weirder and more fascinating by the day, and I, for one, am here for it. Keep those questions coming, because you never know what we'll uncover next. Until then, stay curious out there.